Yeah, good day YouTubers. Tinker O'Toole again with another video. We've got a test bar that's in here. Uh, you can purchase them on eBay or from a good lathe supplier. Comes in a wooden box. And it's got a Morse Taper 2 on it. And you don't have to use a Morse Taper 2. You can use the uh, uh, dead centre or a live centre. So I've got dead centres in both end. Uh, normally you don't put a dead centre in the chuck, but I have a uh, a roller, a bump roller. That's a bump roller there. So I can bump roll that dead centre so that it's virtually got no run out. And I'm getting, uh, I'm measuring on the horizontal, and that's where roughly... I'm measuring exact, well, virtually exactly in the middle of the, the centre line, and I'm getting a variation of 0 0.01 uh, of a millimetre. Now, that roughly equates to about one thousandths of an inch. So that's not bad. We'll just see if we can zoom in there so that we can show you that. So, if we wind it back slowly. The bar... Look, you're wasting your time trying to turn a bar yourself because this particular bar here, it comes with, uh, it's four digits. Zero, 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 two, right? So that's how accurate it is, four digits. So if you wind, you put it on zero and you wind it slowly, don't jerk it, do it nice and slow. The needle hasn't moved yet. Just moved a little bit, barely one micron, barely. It's about one micron there. 0.01, not one micron, uh, yeah, 0.01. So we've got a really good reading. So we need to test it vertical, and that's going to test how much wear is in the lathe. Now, I did adjust the headstock. Uh, and I shimmed it, and I put about 0.1 of a millimetre in there, right? So, of uh, brass shims. So, this is barely moving, which is a fantastic result. You can see it's just off the zero, right? It's just off the zero, and if we wind it back slowly, it'll just slowly go back to the zero, so that's actually a really good reading for an old lathe. And yeah, because that actually means between the two centers that there's not much variation. I did have to adjust here, right? So you will have to, I'll just zoom back out so that you can see. You need to put a screwdriver in here. And you can move the top section, not the bottom section, with the screwdriver, with these bolts. You can move it over that way, or you can get the screwdriver and move it over that way. And that's what I did. And that's what this alignment tool will do, because it was out by quite a lot. And you can only line your headstock up and your dead centre perfectly if you've got a dial gauge and if you've got a test piece. If you don't have a de test piece... You'll never be able to line it up properly. You'll be guessing. So that means that if I was turning something this length, that I'm not going to get a big variation. I'd be lucky if I was a thou out. Now, on a modern lathe, on a much better lathe, you may get better than that, or most likely that you would. But considering this is 72 years old, that's not a bad result. So I'm pretty happy uh, with measuring that. We will set it up to measure vertical. Okay, so using the test bar, it's Morse taper two. It goes into the headstock. Put the dial gauge on, and we've got two point seven thou variation from one end to the other end. And Probably the best part about it, there's no variation really starts till we get about at this point away from the chuck 
So the end of the jaws would be about four and a half inches before we start seeing some variation. So we've got a little bit of wear here and the wear continues to sort of go down uh, till we get to about point, roughly 0.7 uh, yeah, 0 0.7, uh, 0 0.07 of a millimetre, which is uh, 2.7 thou. So there is a little bit of wear there. Look, I don't know what they are when they come out brand new. But that said, remember that the chuck uh, can be between 1 and 2 thou uh, clearance uh, on the bearings. So... Yeah, we're not talking microns. This, remember, this machine here is 72 years old. On a brand new machine, we're probably talking microns uh, when they're brand new. So for something that's 72 years old, it's got 2.7 thou variation from one end to the other end. I think that's pretty good. Now, the only other thing that I would say, and I could probably get, well, not probably, I'm 99% sure I could get it a little bit better if I put a very thin shim in the uh, tail stock. Uh, I'm sure I could lift it up just that little bit extra uh, and I could get it a little bit better. But look, I'm not turning shafts or doing anything that's that precision that I need a half a thou uh, variation on the vertical. On the horizontal, yeah, look, we got near half a thou. It was Excellent result, really good result that we got there. So I was really happy with that. And you can quite easily get up to half a thou, even a little bit better if you want to take the time. If the shaft is only two microns, that's close enough to what that well, that's about the best you can get because it's just a matter of adjusting these side screws on the tailstock, uh, going backwards and forwards on the center line of the shaft and adjusting these until you get virtually no movement on the needle. And that's what I did. And I was really happy with the result. But the wear on the bed, I honestly think for something that's 72 years old, that uh, 2.7 thou from one end to the other end, I don't think that's uh, critical, especially for the work I'm doing. But I would be interested he uh, hearing from others as to what, sort of where they say that they get from one end sort of to the other end. Well, we're not the full length, but we're probably in the middle of the lathe. Uh, yeah, we're probably in the middle. So, But it gives you a good indication. So it's not too bad for most of the work that you're doing. If you're doing precision work, and the other thing is a lot of it also depends uh, the surface of what you're turning, which to me is another critical thing, is the type of metal that you've got. Certainly, if you're using mild steel, you get the worst finish. And the diameter, if you measure it with a micrometer, is a little bit over the place because the surface finish is terrible. Next, if you go to bright steel, the surface finish on, that's not that brilliant either. you really got to go to some tool steel to get like a, a really good finish on it. And if you look at this test bar that I've got here, we can have a look at that close. That's been ground on a precision grinding machine. So it almost looks, it's got a beautiful mirror finish. So we'll just have a look at that. I don't know if the camera gives it any justice, but it's got a thin film of oil. I'll just wipe that off. That is a beautiful finish. It's almost a mirror finish. It's that smooth. Yeah, look, it's really good. It's excellent. So... You know, you won't turn as good as that, not with two microns, because that's what the finish is on this. Two micron accuracy. And the other thing, because it's a Morse taper, uh, you can use live or dead centers at each end as well. So I've got it on Morse taper, right? There it is there. And it's just a matter of... I'll just wind it back out. So there's the Morse taper there. You can see that. Live center at each end. 